It is one of the most spiritual, amazingly beautiful cathedrals in the world. And the idea of filling it with, with my work was, was um, almost overwhelming. People come here for regeneration, to, to feel uplifted. And this is what my sculpture, the message of my sculpture, has always been about. So to have a piece like this, which is about ascension in a way, in a cathedral of, of this beauty, was just the most marvelous thing. Meridiana is one of many sculptures that I've done that are about the possibility of reaching higher. And so it seemed the perfect piece to open this exhibition with and to stand in the nave, glowing almost as a beacon for the possibility of reaching higher. People who go to a museum, there's a kind of sterility in a museum. In a cathedral, people leave all their preconceptions outside. And that possibility of revelation, spiritual revelation, is there because they are confronting a work of art openly, freely, and, and vulnerably even. All of the sculptures in this part of the cathedral relate to a theme that I've been concentrated on for many years called Tree of Life. The Tree of Life is a symbol that we find in almost every religion. Wherever you, you look, you will find ideas of the Tree of Life. And the sculptures began with my mother having said to me that she was really upset that all of the memorials to honor the Holocaust were so lacking in spirit. You have empty rooms, empty suitcases, piles of rubble, symbols of what people lost, but nothing that was enduring or, or uplifting. And many years later, I discovered myself doing a sculpture where the base of it had several parts, twisting and turning and coming up, bodies almost. And then instead of ending, they went up in blossoming. And I realized, this is the tree of life, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a tree of life to commemorate that loss. That maybe the bodies were going up, but they weren't going up in smoke, they were going up in blossoms and, and somehow lifting up into something that was endless. I've been very interested in women's identity and how we feel about ourselves, who we are. And this, is, this sculpture is commemorating the 100th year anniversary of this women getting the vote in England. And it's many, many women working together, pulling upwards and actually having an effect as you come to the top, as it's blossoming. Many people looking at this say, I've never seen you use marble that had veining and so much what people see as imperfection. It's not, it's just the marble. And I said that was part of my idea, the idea that began imperfect, it began with what looks like flaws. And as it opens up to the top, it's completely pure white marble. <laughs>
This sculpture is part of a group, a new group of works I've, I've been doing, and the first model of it I worked on for several days without really looking at it, and I, I actually was so involved in it and so excited about it, it seemed to be coming to me from somewhere else. Someone came in my studio and looked at it and started crying, and she said, oh my goodness, you." You've, you've done the Raft of Medusa, and I'd never seen that painting. It's in the Louvre, and it's of a group of people shipwrecked on the sea and, and struggling for life. And I looked at it, and I understood. Some months before, I had talked with a young woman who'd been working in Lesbos, trying to deal with the numbers of, of rafts that were coming in with, with refugees, trying to save them, trying to help them once they came. And I realized that that had such a strong impact on me that I, I was now doing this. And I worked for many months doing about four or five models, and each of them was so raw and you felt the pain. And then suddenly, that was transformed, and this was the first, really, of that group where there's something so beautiful about it. And I realized that one of the statements made by a philosopher that had most influenced me in my work was Kierkegaard, who said, art has to be begin with a scream, has to begin with pain. But if the artist isn't capable of translating, transforming that pain, into a work of beauty. It isn't art. This piece is one of the most difficult achievements in terms of creating it, because initially, everybody looked at my model and said, there is no way you're going to do that in marble. There's no space between the pieces. There's no way you can get into it. We could do it in bronze, but you can't do it in marble. For me, it had to be in marble because I wanted the translucency, I wanted the vulnerability, I wanted the light of it. And so I had to figure out, in an almost engineering way, how to do it. So I came up with the idea of having this piece separate. And it's still a little, you can see it moves, where nothing else will move at all. This one will move a little bit. So that meant you could get into all the inner surfaces to carve it and then insert this when it was finished. part of a group of works that I've, I've done which are about the space within, that space within that we don't have in our lives, the space within we don't give enough attention to that gets lost and yet it's that space where we, we learn and we grow and we, we can feel protected. I've, I've always believed that monumental sculpture should engage the public, people should be able to move within it touch is so important and I, I think we, in our society, we, we hardly touch anything. I mean, the key, we, we, we're working with, with computers and we're tapping, we're not touching. That sense of learning about feeling, learning about form. So for me, sculpture and the excitement of sculpture is touch and it's why I'm always touching it, learning new things about it. And, and you see now people coming in, touching, going into the pieces. And it's, it's a very important part of learning 
about feeling and learning about, about who we are. I have a joy in my sculpture, it's absolutely true. I think that that's a very strong <laughs> element. I love creating it and I love seeing it accepted. And A sculpture isn't completed until somebody is looking at it. If that sculpture stayed in my own room and I was the only one seeing it, it would be only half finished. The completion of it comes in its reception, its res this response to it what it draws from someone. And so that, I think that more than anything is why doing an exhibition in a cathedral where everyone is welcome, where the, every, everything they feel is open and acceptable is, is just a dream.